One of the central issues surrounding Nigeria's 2024 budget is the challenge of revenue generation. Given the country is reliant on oil revenues and the need to diversify income sources. Now, with fluctuating oil prices and global market uncertainties, there are concerns about the sustainability of revenue projections and the impact of funding critical sectors such as infrastructure, healthcare, and education. Experts say the need to address revenue shortfall and explore innovative ways to boost non oil revenue streams will ensure the budget's effectiveness and government's ability to deliver on its promises. Well, I introduced him earlier, and let's get talking. I'm being joined by the Head Research and Policy Adversary at Budget Nigeria, Mr. Inobong Hussein. Uh, it's good to see you, uh, Mr. Hussein. How are you today? Doing very well. Good afternoon, Tulu. And how are you doing? Very well, too. Uh, well, there, there are a lot of issues surrounding 2024 budget. But for me, I like to start this way. that um, Does the National Assembly really have the right to insert or to, you know, add up to whatever is sent by the executive. What powers do they really have regarding that spending plan? Yeah, thanks, uh, Tolu. I mean, the Constitution grants the National Assembly the powers of the purse. As you know, the budget is an appropriation act, meaning that it's an act of the National Assembly. But then uh, the Constitution is not clear on the scope of those powers of appropriation, as the case may be. Okay. So does the National Assembly have the powers to even completely rewrite the budget? To what extent does the National Assembly, uh, can the National Assembly insert new projects into the budget? To what extent can even the National Assembly increase even the rest revenue estimates or the expenditure projections of government. Because mind you, these budgets are usually prepared by technical persons within the executive, you know, around certain parameters with the best of information available to, uh, to the executive. So if the executive submits a budget of 27.5 trillion naira, for instance, it's because it has assessed all the revenue uh, streams that, you know, it expects to get revenue for within a particular uh, fiscal year, looking at all the parameters available to it. And it's within uh, those revenue limits that it prepares a budget. So you ask yourself, what is the basis for uh, the National Assembly, that is a law-making arm of government, to now increase uh, that budget by 1.2 trillion naira? Where will that additional 1.2 trillion naira come from? And so these are questions that still beg for answers. And that's why we've, you know, in the last couple of years, suggested that uh, a judicial pronouncement be made on this with regards to the actual scope of the powers of appropriation, you know, granted uh, the National Assembly by the Constitution. Because these sort of arbitrary insertions or, you know, uh, increase in limits has a way, can have a way of distorting uh, the budget as the case may be. Let me also ask you that the act of omitting or not showing to breakdown of some allocations, what about that? How does that come up in this document? It goes, yeah, it goes against every principle of budgeting. I mean, one of the core principles of budgeting is that, you know, the budget must be comprehensive. There must be details of how, you know, line by line, line by line details of how government intends to spend all of the revenues it raises. And in some cases, like, you know, uh, when, we, when we, you know, have to finance a deficit, uh, that the details of the budget are clearly, you know, uh, outlined and published, you know, as the case may be. We cannot have, we cannot have a situation where tech fund that has, has a budget of 700 billion naira doesn't have a breakdown for that budget. You have the National Judicial Council with a budget of 300 and. 41, uh, you know, billion naira without a breakdown. You have the, you know, a budget of 40 billion naira for INEC without a breakdown. The government-owned enterprises, uh, even if the budget proposal was published, but the actual budget that was passed and approved uh, with a cumulative sum of 1.88 trillion, that budget, the details 
of over, I mean, about 68 of those government-owned enterprises have equally not been published. And so a lot of things have happened, you know, in, in the dark. So that's why it's important that the details of, you know, the summary budget of these agencies of government or arms of government, as the case may be, are published. And so that accountability actors can actually track the implementation of these projects. But we're unable to do so if we do not see you know, the details of, of these budgets as the case may be. Hmm. Well, this, this is really important because many would now say there ought to be consultations when the budgeting process is on. How well are we doing that in this part of the world and how are we carrying the likes of civil society groups and other concerned parties along so that we don't get to this point after the budget is passed, we start to have issues like this? Well, uh, the truth is that in recent times, uh, there have been attempts, I, I call them attempts, right, to, you know, aggregate the voices of, you know, civil society groups to hear their voices, you know, uh, on a couple of these issues. But the truth is, over time, we have not seen these recommendations, see some of these concerns, you know, reflect in how resources are allocated through the budget. It would seem that a lot of the issues that we have been, you know, uh, debating or been bringing to the fore over the years are things that still exist and, you know, have even become worse in this case. You have a situation where, uh, for instance, a hundred billion naira envelope for, for constituency projects in previous administrations, I, I think it started from the administration of uh, President Obasanjo, was created for uh, National Assembly members to you know, introduce certain projects that, you know, affect their constituencies in the budget, nominate those projects that will be implemented by the executive. But it seems in recent times, especially in the last three, four years, that the National Assembly has gone beyond that 100 billion naira envelope, relying on their powers of appropriation that has not been clearly defined, to now is arbitrarily insert projects into the budget proposal submitted the, by the executive. If you recall, uh, when President Buhari was signing the 2023 budget into law, he actually stated that this was a budget that was unimplementable because the National Assembly had inserted over 6,500 projects in a lot of cases in MDAs that neither had the capacity nor the mandate to implement those projects that the National Assembly had inserted projects that ideally should be the responsibilities of either the local government or the state governments. Now, in this, uh, in this new dispensation with the current National Assembly, from our findings, over 7,400 projects were inserted you know, in the 2024 budget. And the cumulative sum of those project, uh, projects were about 2.2 trillion Naira. Now, uh, why is this a problem? The, the budget is supposed to be an implementation tool for your national development plan. The executive painstakingly developed a national development plan for 2021 to 2025. And it clearly articulated what its you know, driving policy objective was for us to be able to you know, attain certain development goals or objectives as the case may be. But the way and manner in which resources have been allocated across the budget, right, doesn't suggest that some of those lofty development goals can or would be achieved. You have agencies under the Ministry of Agri, which primarily, you know, the, the, the mandate of that ministry should be food security, getting involved in projects that ideally shouldn't be their concern in the first place. You have research institutes, a research institute that is supposed to, you know, conduct research around, uh, you know, our, uh, oceanography and marine development, constructing roads. Uh, you have them building primary health, primary healthcare centers, installing street lights, installing balls in communities, you know, building community town halls. And you ask yourself, is this the best use of government funds, especially if you consider the fact that the bulk of these funds, you know, a, a large chunk of it is borrowed. And so what is the essence of having your local government or the state government if the federal government is meddling in things that, you know, those 
tiers of government uh, should be meddling in. In fact, it seems like the budget has become a tool for solving family problems. You have budgets to construct or to build uh, halls for churches, you know, budgets to build ultra-modern VIP toilets. And these are not small sums. One billion here, 500 million naira here. In fact, in some cases, you see that this, are, this is just mere sitting out somewhere to allocate figures. How do you have, you know, a project to buy laptops in a particular region? Let's say it's 263 million, uh, 43,231 naira. And you have that same allocation to buy medical equipment. What is the possibility that those completely variable items, that, you know, that vary, uh, would cost exactly the same amount to the last unit? It just tells you that the core principles of conceptualization when it comes to capital projects with regards to the cost-benefit analysis, proper valuation of those projects have not been done. Projects ideally should have a net contribution to social welfare. If you look at what we have allocated in the last three years alone to streetlights and boreholes, and you drive across the length and breadth of this country, you would ask yourself, where exactly, which hole exactly has this money been buried in? Because there's no evidence at all for the huge resources that we deploy year in, year out to, you know, uh, to try to deliver these projects, which in a lot of cases, and in our opinion, should not be the focus, you know, of the federal government. The federal government is supposed to focus on the broader uh, development, you know, initiative. You are going to build roads, you build trunk A roads that are federal roads and rehabilitate those roads. People are using federal funds now to tar the streets to their to the gates of their houses in their villages. This cannot be the best use of, you know, of federal government funds. Hmm. Interesting breakdown. Uh, but le let's let's um, let's also look at the correlation between this uh, document uh, and, of course, the medium-term expenditure framework because there should be a correlation. Are we in sync in, in your assessment? I mean, definitely not. Uh, I don't think you know if, if you if you properly look at the national development plan and the medium-term expenditure framework. Like I had said, there are very key you know, policy trust of government. And, I mean, when this administration came in, uh, because initially the Ministry of Agri used to be the Ministry of Agri and Rural Development. And then the National Assembly members would, under the guise of rural development, now insert these constituency-like projects. And I think uh, this administration, when it came in, probably had seen that and decided to re reorganize and refocus that ministry, but by renaming it the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security. But that did not reflect in how resources under that ministry were, you know, allocated to achieve the core mandate or the policy objectives of those MDAs. It didn't reflect in that. And so that tells you that there's a huge gap between what we intend to achieve within uh, the, the National Development Plan or uh, the scope of the Medium-Term Development Plan All right. and the budget. There's, there's a huge difference. All right. Beautiful stuff there. Mr. Inyobong Hussein, it's always nice having you on the program. Thank you so much, Ed Advas Head of Research and Policy Advisory at Budget. Thanks for making sense of this uh, topic uh, for us today. We appreciate your time. Do enjoy the rest of your day.